This presentation will review the zonal anatomy of the prostate gland that is commonly used in pathology. The zonal classification was first proposed by McNeil in 1968. Dr. McNeil was a pathologist at Stanford. This image is a bisected prostate. The cut surface appears somewhat homogeneous, although you can begin to see differences in the posterior zone of the prostate compared to anterior. This is the urethra. This presentation will review the zonal anatomy of the prostate in about five minutes. The prostate gland extends from the bladder base to the urogenital diaphragm like an inverted pyramid and envelops the prostatic urethra, which in this image is shown in yellow. In blue, you see the seminal vesicles and the ejaculatory ducts extending from the seminal vesicles to the verumontanum, where the ejaculatory ducts empty into the urethra. The periurethral glands are these small, this area here, extending from the bladder base down to the vera montanum. This green area is the transition zone, which consists of two independent lobes extending from the bladder neck towards the vera montanum. As men age, the periurethral glands and the transition zone frequently hypertrophy. On this image, we have added the central zone in brown or orange. This central zone extends from the posterior surface of the transition zone and encloses the ejaculatory ducts. In the radiologic literature, radiologists describe the central zone, which the central gland, which frequently contains the central zone in addition to the transition zone along with the periurethral glandular tissue. Benign prostatic hyperplasia typically involves the periurethral glandular tissue and the transition zone and this region together again is considered the central gland to distinguish from the peripheral zone which we'll come to momentarily. On this image in red is the peripheral zone. This is the region of the prostate gland in which most cancers arise. It is the most posterolateral glandular component of the prostate. Notice that the peripheral zone to central gland ratio changes as we go in the prostate from the bladder base cranially to the apex of the prostate such that at the base the amount of central gland central zone and peripheral zone uh, is about equal by the time we get to the apex essentially the entire prostate is the peripheral zone On this image, in brown, has been added the anterior fibromuscular stroma. This is essentially devoid of any glandular tissue. As mentioned, the transition zone tends to hypertrophy with age. The image on the left is a cartoon of the prostate in a young male. Transition zone here, central zone and peripheral zone. On the right is a prostate from a man in the perhaps in the 70s, like in the in 70 years of age, where the transition zone has enlarged dramatically, compressing both the central zone and the anterior fibromuscular stroma, and less seen less well, but the peripheral zone as well. This is an example of transition zone hypertrophy. Additionally, you can see there is a median lobe in which the BPH extends into the bladder. 
Brief summary then of the zonal anatomy. The transition zone surrounds the proximal urethra and is responsible for benign prosthetic hyperplasia. The central zone surrounds the ejaculatory ducts. Together with the transition zone in radiologist literature, it's considered to be the central gland. The peripheral zone surrounds the distal urethra, and this is the area where most cancers arise. And finally, the anterior fibril muscular stroma uh, is essentially devoid of any calendular components. And there you have prostate zonal anatomy in about five minutes.